What a, what a great Wednesday. You guys are here worshiping God on a Wednesday night. This has to be the most on fire place and exciting place and probably the whole empire. You guys are here and you're here to learn and grow. I was talking to my daughter last night and we we're just talking about purpose and it's great to have vision, but you'll never have a, f a fulfilled vision or fulfilled life until your vision um, and your dreams are attached to helping people. Uh, if, if it becomes just a selfish motive, like I just want to make money or I just want to become famous or I just want to be having a million subscribers on YouTube, whatever your story is. By the time you get there, you're going to find that you climbed an empty mountain. Unfulfillment will be at the top of it. And you're going to say all that and I'm still unfulfilled. Attach every thing, single thing that you do with helping people and loving people. I guarantee you this. Everything you've ever wanted, you'll receive at the end. It'll help you financially. It'll help you emotionally. It'll help you mentally. It'll make, make you a healthy thinker that can have some healthy relationships. How can you have a healthy relationship if you're just focused on, uh, focusing on selfish wants and needs? You, you, uh, matter of fact, you become very dangerous because this is what happens. If the person doesn't meet your needs, this is what you do. You get rid of them and you treat them like they're disposable. Um, but this is what God is saying. You'll never be fulfilled tr ever trying to do this, get everybody to serve you. If you really want to be fulfilled, serve everybody. Make a difference in people's lives. Help them achieve their dreams. How many believe that, that God has left you here to make a difference now, but a difference forever? Some of you guys may be wondering, Matt, is, what's going on? Is that a mark on your head? Well, this is what happened. I didn't get in a fight. I know I'm in San Bernardino, but I didn't get in a fight. My, my little grandson, he, he jumped into the pool and I wasn't looking. He jumped right into me with his teeth first and just cut me open on, on my head. He, he was crying a little bit. I was bleeding when it was all said and done. But that's how that story started and ended. And I'm here today still preaching, even with major injuries. <laughs> but um, I, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I want to just, a matter of fact, I'm going to have you sit down now. I'm going to have you sit down and I'm going to, I want to bring up our prison ministry for a minute. I don't know if you guys know, we have a real amazing prison ministry and we are literally going to the next level in prison ministry. Uh, I, I was, I was hearing a mother that she has, uh, she goes to our church. And her mother's in, her son's in prison right now. And, and her son is, I go, how is he doing? And he, she said, well, he's doing good. He's serving God. He goes, but there's no church services in the prison he's in. So while he's there in prison, he's trying to find God. He's made a decision to serve God. But there's no prison ministry that's going there to teach him the word so he can have some, have some uh, fellowship with brothers and sisters. He doesn't have that. Uh, but our prison ministry is doing everything they can to go to many prisons and we're reaching them almost every single weekend. We got a team going into some prison in California. And, and what we want to do is we want to tonight, they have like 200 Bibles. And if you want to get involved with this, you're going to get an opportunity. You could sponsor a prisoner. This is what we're going to do. We're actually, when you sponsor one of these Bibles, this is what's going to happen. We're going to take it to a prisoner. So we want to get, this is our goal. Let's get 200 of them covered tonight. The Bibles are like 20 bucks or something like that. For a study Bible, I think it's $40. You know, but the idea is when, when we sponsor them, our team is going in there and they're going to start this weekend and they're going to actually hand a Bible to a prisoner that doesn't have the Word of God. How many believe that's a worthy cause? Tell us what's happening in the prisons. How many prisons are we going to right now? Right now we're over uh, six different prisons. Okay. I have the opportunity to lead two of the prisons, Calipatria State Prison and Donovan State Prison. So uh, let me ask this, what do we do when we go into prisons? You know, we just go in there and everything we learn here from Pastor Marco, from the discipleship, we give back to them. We give to the inmates. We go in there and show them the love that we received ourselves. Right. You know, one of the things that we're working on right now is getting holy warriors into the prisons. So what we're working right now is getting everything on video, making sure we're getting our training manuals ready. 
But I really believe that when we get into when we get into the prisons and we bring holy wars into the prisons, I believe it's going to spread like wildfire. And I really believe that we're going to be one of the top prison ministries in the whole world. I really believe that because what we have, I really believe they need. Tell us a story about a you recent know, story about what's going on. We have two brothers that were at an event April 29th of this year. We had an event called a Hope event in partnership with Prison Fellowship. We had a Hope event at Calipatria State Prison. We went in and we brought them everything we learned here. We loved on them. We fellowship with them. We gave them an opportunity to know the love of God. When we had showed them that opportunity of love, there was the ones that responded. There was ones that came up and said, you know what? This is what I want for my life. They didn't know the love of the Lord. Some of them had been written off, but we gave them that opportunity. These are two of the brothers right here. This is Brother George right here. Brother George has been in prison for nine years, and he answered the call and responded to the call of the altar call. This is Brother uh, Joseph. Joseph also had been in prison for almost five years, and right now he's serving in our Pomona campus. You know, there was a, a time, there's a scripture in the Bible in uh, Exodus 3, 3, 7. It says that the Lord told Moses, I hear the cry of my people. And he sent them, he commissioned them to go out. And that's what the Lord is doing to us. He's saying, go out and meet the needs, uh, meet the needs of the lost, those who do not know me. Show them my love. And that's today we have the opportunity to use this as a tool. Because in our families, we all have a Joseph, we all have a... Uh, George, and that's in our family, that we could reach. This is a seed to reach one of them. And so we're just asking you to partner with us. Get involved with us because we need you. You know, um, they, they might not always have visitors, but they could be in communion or communication with God all the time. And instead of turning to drugs or the gangs in, in, in the prisons, they could turn to Jesus Christ, and especially if they have a Bible. How many believe we should get a Bible in our hands? So let's make sure we sell them out today. That would be really awesome. Uh, thank you so Amen. much. Amen. God bless um, one, you guys. One more thing. One more thing. Uh, we, we, we have a, a YouTube channel that's not really, we haven't pushed it, but it's called Guaranteed Growth. And it's, it's focused on leadership. And what I want, there's a QR code. If you want to get a download that, all my leadership teachings will go on there. Like on Sunday, I, on Sunday you're going to get a video that had to do with our with my DG and I talked about how to become a multiplying leader. So you'll get that. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of podcasts on there that you can listen to. If you're interested in becoming a next level leader, um, you just need next level content. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. Every Sunday you're going to be able to get another teaching on leadership. Some of it is our staff meetings and we'll just record it and you'll be able to see it or hear it. Um, but as, as I'm getting leadership content, we'll record as much as I can to be, be able to pass it on to you guys. So download that if you wish, and um, you just the QR code, it, and, it'll, and, and we'll send you, and if you subscribe, you'll get, on Sunday, you'll actually get the teaching. Are you guys ready for the word? Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to study the Bible, your word, the New Testament and the Old Testament. The Old Testament means the Old Covenant. The New Testament just means the new covenant. It's the agreement that you've made with man. So we just thank you, Lord, that you're going to begin to reveal to us what promises you've given us, what you want to share with us, and what we actually have as believers, what Jesus paid for, and is actually transferred to every single believer. So help us to understand your word tonight. And if anybody's here for the first time, that they would just experience your love, understand what you're saying, because everybody needs you and everybody needs a savior and everybody wants to be whole and you're the answer to all of that. So we just thank you in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for being here tonight. We're getting ready to go to Uganda um, this Sunday. Um, we're leaving, the team is leaving uh, actually Sunday morning and we'll be headed to Uganda. We are taking over an orphanage and right around, right around 60 churches in Uganda. We're able to say yes to the orphans and make sure we take care of them and yes to these pastors only because you continue saying yes to the call of God in your life. But thank you so much. All we want to do is introduce people to the relationship that they've been looking for. 
Every single one of those little boys and little girls have been abandoned maybe, or their parents have died, or some of them have been sexually abused um, because they're, they're, it's just crazy how people will take advantage of, uh, of those that are weak. Instead of supporting them, they just abuse them. So some of these kids are being turned out in the streets and um, they're becoming prostitutes at a really, really young age and there's grown men that are looking for little girls and little boys. It's really happening. But if it wasn't for a church that said yes, it continues to happen with no resistance. But there's a God that absolutely loves them and wants to be part of their lives. But if they don't know, they can't have their relationship with God. That's where we come in. Many of us are in this room. You've been searching for wholeness. You've been searching for completeness. Um, you've been trying to overcome some of the attributes that you don't like about yourself. And I think every single one of us, if we're honest, there's certain things that we hate about ourselves. And I wish I could change that. And we've tried to change it. And I think every single year on, on New Year's, we make some resolutions. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that. And I'm going to change that. But probably by mid-January, you'd realize you didn't change. And for some of us, it's just the next day. This is what I've realized that no matter how much we want to change, there's so much, there's so much we can do when it comes to changing, changing ourselves. But there's a God that can change you to the core. He could change your heart. He could heal you from the brokenness and he could set you free from addictions and bad habits. And some of us have just habits that in, our, in the way we're thinking that's so self-destructive. If God doesn't save you, there's a spirit of suicide visiting you. So today what we want to do is talk about the relationship that God wants to have with us. And the relationship he wants to have with us, he calls it a covenant. You've heard of the word, maybe you haven't heard of the word covenant, but you've heard of the word marriage and, and maybe the word marriage covenant. You've maybe heard something like that because marriage is a covenant. And when we're talking about covenants, it describes a relationship that God has created and it describes a relationship that's supposed, supposed to last forever. And in these covenants or relationships that God has chosen for us to experience him in, there's a lot of blessings, there's a lot of promises that are attached to this agreement that he wants to have with man. So let's talk about the word covenant for just a second as a definition. So what is a covenant? It is an agreement with conditional promises. Say it with me, it's an agreement with conditional promises. God uses covenants to establish a relationship friendship or partnership with humans think about this being in partnership with God being in partnership with God in your life being in partnership with God in your marriage being in partnership with God raising your children being in partnership with God in your business wouldn't it be great to have the part wouldn't it be great for God the creator of the universe to be your partner because if he's your partner the truth is you can't fail so many of us right now are going through life and you really are missing something, but you, and you're thinking, man, I just need a man or a woman to be my partner. I feel like there's something missing. And I'm not denying that a man or a woman cannot be a partner, but, but they can't be the partner that fulfills you. Only God can be that partner that fulfills you. If you need help tonight, maybe you just need to tap out like the old WWF wrestling matches. I used to love the tag team ones. Remember back in the, I don't anybody like the tag team ones? I, I just love that because it always seemed like you just were an inch away from being, and you're just getting clobbered and just, and, and just, he couldn't get it. And finally he tags them and then the new guy comes in and just destroys the enemy. Well, some of you guys right now, you're one tap away from God coming in and helping you with your life, helping with your family. God said, I want to help you. I want to be your partner. Say with me, partner. So now God creates covenants so that he can share his abundant life and his blessings with mankind. So he said, I've, I've created an agreement or a partnership or a friendship, a defined relationship, because I want to share my life with you. That's what a covenant's all about. Me and Lisa have been married for 34 years, and I got married with her because I want to share my life with someone. I want to share my life with her. She's sharing her life with me, and I'm sharing my life with her. Now, it's great 
but we both have flaws. But imagine God sharing his life with you and he has no flaws. He's all powerful. He has no need. And he's saying, everything I have, I want to share it with you. Some of you right now are one decision away from, from establishing and saying yes to the greatest partnership that you've ever experienced. Now, marriage is a great partnership. I, I was with Lisa um, yes, uh, Monday. We have our date day Monday. We don't do date nights. We do date days now. And the kids, I said, where are you at? We're still on our date. But I, I talked to her and I told her, Lisa, are, am I your best friend? I already know she was, yes. I go, for real? I go, because you're my best friend. There's nobody in the world I'd rather be with than my wife. And, and I, what, now I'm, just, I'm saying that not to brag about a relationship because that's how relationships should be. How many understand that? That's how marriages should be. But, but this is what I'm saying is that God is asking you, are you my best friend? Because this is what I want. I want to be your best friend. Because to me, there's nothing more important than you and a relationship with you. You might think you're far away from me. You might not even believe in me, but God believes in you. And that's why he brought you here. And you say, what does God want? He wants a relationship with you and he wants to share his whole life with you. Isn't that amazing? So he's created a covenant for us to be able to do that. So what happens in a covenant? And today I want to really drive this point home. Two lives become one life. Say it with me. Two lives become what? One life. And that's why um, in order for me and Lisa to get married, I couldn't have a side squeeze. Because it's not three lives becoming one life. Two lives becoming one life, right? So I had to, uh, it was like we're forsaken all others. It's part of some marriage vows, forsaken all others. And the reason you're forsaken all others, so you can become, two lives could become what? One life, right? So, so this idea, if you're not willing to forsake all others, you can't enter into a marriage covenant. So now if your girl saying, you ask her, will you marry me? And she says, are you going to finally be faithful? And you say, well, what does that have to do with it? I just want to get married to you. She says, everything, homeboy. <laughs> because I don't play that. Either you're going to be with me and I'm going to be with you and, and I'm your number one and there is no number two. And that's it. We're in it for life until death do us part, forsaken all others, or there's no marriage. Now understand, that's what you would want in a marriage. Now I'm not saying that you won't run into difficulties. I'm not saying that there's not going to be temptation. I'm not saying that someone might fall, might, might fall. Those things might happen, but you don't enter into a marriage saying, I want that. Unless you're just a swinger. And if you're a swinger and you think you're married, you're not married. Because you're trying, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to make your own definition of marriage. And that's what's happening now. A covenant relationship is established by God, defined by God. The promises are there. The consequences are there. And you could do all you want to twist it and shift it and, and redefine it. But understand, you're only fooling yourself. You guys understand that? So now... We're, two lives become one. Now, when you, when you give your life to Jesus, there's, there's an assumption here. God gives his whole life to you, and you give your whole life to him. That's it. That's all it is. I give my whole life to him. No, he gives his whole life to me first, and then I respond, okay, I'll give you my life. Now, it's a really good deal because you come broke, you come broken, you come dysfunctional, you come cray cray, you come addicted, you come with debt, you come, I mean, you come with your dysfunction, you come with your past, you come with your family problems, you come with your excuses, you come with, you come with your hate, you come with your anger, and God says, it's okay. Give me all that because I can handle it. Because my love is greater than your flaws. Come on, is there anybody that wants to be in a relationship with his love is greater than your flaws. He goes, and I'm going to love those flaws out of you. It's going to be okay. I have the power to do it. I believe in you. When was the last time you had someone that believed in you? 
And God is saying, I believe in you. How do you know he believed in you? Because he suffered and died for you. And he was believing that when he sacrificed his life, you would say yes to him. That's how bad God wants a relationship with you. He was willing to die to forgive you of your sins, to clean your slate so you could start brand new and have a relationship, a covenant relationship with God. And he's saying, I'll give you everything if you'll just give me your life. How many believe that's a good deal for us? Right? So when we come to Jesus, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, it says, but the person who is joined, someone say joined, and it's the same word that's used for marriage. Um, um, let no one separate what God has joined together. It's a, mar- it's a covenant word. He's bringing together into being one. Now, when you get married, it's really important that you really surrender. If you're not 100% sure, let's say right now you're engaged and you're not 100% sure that that person's the one, put it off. Well, I'm not sure. Don't, don't ever get married with a I'm not sure. Get all that stuff out while you're going out. And then when you get to that altar and you make those covenant commitments for better, or for worse, for richer, or for poor, and sick, in sickness and in health, until death do us part, say it with faith. You guys understand that? All right, now, the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. And I know it's hard to understand that, but this is how close a relationship God wants with you. He see, back in the Old Testament, before Jesus came, God, God would be with man or walk with them. So Joseph was a great example. He said he prospered in everything he did because the Lord was with him. Say it with me, the Lord was with him. But, but the Lord wasn't in him. How crazy this is. See, that's why I'm not offering you relation, a religion I'm, I'm not offering you laws. I'm offering you a relationship, the closest relationship you could ever have with any human on the face of the earth. I'm talking about God not being with you, but God being in you. Now, that's why someone could come in here with a heroin addiction and be set free, and they have a heroin addiction for 40 years, and they couldn't kick it, and they went through every rehab in the world. But one encounter with Jesus Christ, they became, come on, one with him. He went in them and set them free from whatever addiction was in them. Come on. When Jesus comes in, the depression goes out. When Jesus comes in, the addiction is broken. When Jesus comes in, the healing comes in, the joy comes in, the peace comes in. Does anybody want a relationship with Jesus, a covenant relationship where Jesus comes and is joined with you and he lives inside of you? Now, if Jesus is in you and there's no lifestyle change, Jesus is not in you. I'm not saying you become perfect, but you become really aware. There's some stuff you used to do, not even think twice. All of a sudden, it's God's spirit is in you, and he's checking you. And he says something like this. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. No, I'm just kidding. How many have experienced that? Jesus comes in your life and there was things that you used to do and all of a sudden you're, you have an opportunity to do them again. It's not that you can't do them, but there's a check within you that says, nah. And even if, even if you do it, the high isn't the same high as you used to have. The fun isn't the same. You say, man, I don't know what's going on. I used to enjoy this. I don't enjoy it anymore. Now I'm, I feel a little guilt trip on this. And then you go to God and you pray and you kneel down and you say, Jesus, forgive me. He goes, you're forgiven. It's part of the covenant. If you sin, I'll forgive you and I'll cleanse you. Understand, I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to love you. I'm here to help you grow. It's okay. There's enough love to cover that mess. You become one spirit with him. Like that's like, pastor, explain that to me. I can't. That's crazy. That it's one spirit. I told you guys this Sunday, I was casting out a demon. The demon was terrified. He was looking at my terrified. The demon was in a person. 
the demon's looking at me through the person. He's taking over the person's eyes, everything. He looks at me and he's scared. And I ask him, what do you see? And this is the best way I can explain it. He says, the demon says, I see Jesus. I go, okay. So you don't see Marco and you don't see my weaknesses. Come on. And you don't see my faults, but you see Jesus in me. How do you see Jesus in me? Because we became one. And when the door, come on, when the doors open, Marco used to answer, but not this time. It's his house. He answers. And when the demon saw me, he saw Jesus. When he sees you, he sees Jesus. Come on. You're one with Jesus. You become one. Stop claiming your weaknesses and start claiming your covenant. Give God just one more praise. Now, for Jesus to enter in a relationship with us, there was something he had to do. He had to give his life to become one with us. Now, that's some real deep stuff. But I want you to understand, why did he have to die? Because we had a debt that we had to pay. The Bible is broken up into two covenants. Say, say it with me, two covenants. The Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, the Old Covenant had a problem with it. So God made an agreement with man, and it started with Adam. Now, when God created Adam, it was awesome because he was sharing his whole life with him. How do you know he's sharing his whole life with him? He created the heavens and the earth. He created the animals. He created Eve, which I'm sure was the most beautiful woman ever lived. To, for her, him to enjoy and for her to be his partner in life. All the fruit of the trees, full grown trees were there. Seeds, seed, plants. Um, there was no need there. As a matter of fact, the Garden of Eden, the name of the garden, the word Eden means pleasure. So it's actually the Garden of Pleasure. That means in this garden was the highest level of pleasure you could ever experience on earth. And I'll tell you why it was high level pleasure. Because in that garden was different than any atmosphere we've ever seen on earth. God was in the garden with them and would actually walk and talk with them. And the Bible says, in God's presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Understand, heaven is not going to be boring. Heaven is going to be the most pleasurable place you've ever been. And, I, and this is what I'll tell you. The more you get filled with the presence of God, the more peace you'll have, the more joy you'll have, and the more you'll begin to enjoy life. Give God some praise if that's your testimony. That's how it works. So now God creates everything, no death, no sickness, no growing old, no losing your hair, and no accidents like it happened to me yesterday. No cancer, none of that stuff exists, no mass murders, no violence, no fear, a perfect atmosphere, the garden of pleasure. And God told Adam, as long as you obey my one command, you can stay here and experience this pleasure forever and ever. Just don't eat of that tree in the middle of the garden. But if you eat of the tree in the middle of the garden, you will surely experience death. You will die. You'll experience a separation from God. You'll begin to experience depression, anxiety, fear, sickness, cancer. And this is what's going to happen. Your decision will affect your children. So it won't just be one generation will be affected by your decisions. It will affect your children's children. There's some of us right now that you come from a family that everybody's an alcoholic. Everybody's a gangbanger. Everybody's a womanizer. I mean, you, you just know it. It's in the family line. It's called a generational curse, and it started with Adam. Adam's kids, Cain killed, murder was in, the, was in his children. As soon as they opened the door, well, Adam does sin. And the price for sin, the consequence for doing it our way, 
is death. Someone say death. Some of us are really miserable. And why, you know why you're miserable? Because the consequences are still here. You're miserable because you're doing it your way. And it's crazy. Not only are you doing it your way, you're hard-headed. Because some of your family members are thinking, when are they going to get it? And I believe this, tonight you're going to get it. See, God brought you here to let you know that there's an option and you're not the answer, but there's a God that loves you so much that he died on the cross for your sins and he wants to fill you with his power and make you a new person. No matter what you've done, you could be forgiven and you could be set free. Give God just one more praise because it's true. So now, so Jesus had to give his life to become one with us, and I'll tell you why. Because he couldn't ignore that we broke the original covenant. And the price to pay for the original covenant is suffering and death. So in order to start a new covenant, he had to fulfill the old one. He had to clean the slate. First, he had to forgive you and cleanse you and pay the price for our rebellion. He goes, we can't act like you didn't sin. We can't act like you didn't break the law. And understand, when God says a promise, he can't go back on it. And when God, when God declares a consequence, he can't go back on it either. So if it's going to cause death, it's going to cause death. Death means separation from God. So he says, what I'm going to do, Adam sinned and every other human being after that sin, I'm gonna, God says, I'm going to send my son to start a new covenant. But a man is coming. A perfect man is coming. A new Adam is coming. One that won't give in to Satan. One that won't eat the fruit. One that's going to represent mankind in perfection. And that one is going to restore the covenant with all men and women on earth. And he's going to pay the price for the sins that mankind committed. So in order to make it right, the debt had to be paid. So look at this. In Hebrews 9.14, it says... Just think how much more the blood, or I would say this, the life. When it says blood, it means life. When someone gives their blood, they're given their life. Without blood, there's no life. So it says, just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. This is what he's saying. I'm not only going to forgive you of your sins, I'm going to clean your conscience. You cannot worship God with a guilt trip. If you're in this room and you have a guilt trip and you think you're nothing and you think you're bad and all these things and you're the black sheep of the family and you're thinking that there's a reason you have not received forgiveness yet. So tonight, I don't want anybody to leave this place with a guilt trip. I want you to leave this place knowing that you've been forgiven, that God loves you. And when God forgives you, you receive forgiveness. You forgive yourself. You forgive everybody and receive a brand new start. Who is Jesus for? Jesus is for a whole bunch of sinners like me and you. But he cleanses. He not only forgives me, he cleanses my conscience. You know what that means? Is I'm not right up here with a guilt trip. I'm up here knowing I'm forgiven. Pastor, you've messed up. I know I've messed up, but I've been forgiven. And, I know, and you know how much God wants to forgive me? He shed his blood. Come on, Jesus shed his blood so I could be forgiven. There was a price paid for my forgiveness, and I receive it. Look what it says. For by the power, look at this. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. See, he got, Christ was offered as a perfect sacrifice for what? Our sins. Is there a sacrifice that you can make for your sins? No. Because the wage of sin is death. But God sent a perfect sacrifice, which is Christ. Offered himself as, to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Verse 15. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and the people. So now when the devil comes, the, the, does anybody know what the word devil means? It means accuser. What's the name of the devil? That's what it means, accuser. So what he does, he loves 
accusing us. He's like a little baby gossiper. <laughs> did you see what Christian did? <laughs> you got to be careful that you don't become satanic and trying to find what people are doing and repeating it. You know why? Because the truth is, we, come on, come on this is very important. The truth is, we, we all have sinned. Come on. Right? So, so now he's an accuser, but he's saying, this idea, he tries to accuse, but, but God sticks up for us. He's the mediator. He goes, accuse him of what? Oh, you know, you know, they, you know, they, you know, they're doing that. <laughs> And with, now with covenant people, he says, it's all forgiven. It's erased off the record. They are righteous. You must not know the covenant because when I forgave them, there is no past. Old things have passed away and everything has become new. Come on, does anybody want a new life? Between God and the people. So that all who are called can receive eternal inheritance. Someone say eternal inheritance. So I'm calling you. And I want to share my whole life with you. So I'm cleansing of your sin. So you, when I'm calling you, you qualify for the full covenant or the full inheritance. I was at, I was at AMPM yesterday. And I was getting a freezy. I like those freezies, Coke and pina colada mix, right? But there was like a line, and I, I, was, I didn't know what line I was in. There's a line over there, line over here. So I was like, I went to this line, didn't look like I was moving, I went to this line. Then I found out the line that was over there in the corner was a different line. That line was for the lotto. I think it was 999 million or something like that. Almost a billion. So they were like, oh, everybody was, was woo. We I'm gonna be a billionaire. <laughs> but they were trying to qualify for the billion through luck. And this is what God is saying. What I have for you, money can't buy, a billion dollars can't buy it. I'm talking about eternal life. I'm talking about fullness of life. And this is what he's saying. Everything I got, I want to give it to you. And I've made a way for you to be forgiven. And I've made a way for you to get the full inheritance. Now, how do you get it? Look what it says right here. Man, I didn't, I didn't, I'm going to have to, I barely started here. <laughs> Receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. Now, when God gives you a promise of eternal life, you got it. All you got to do is re believe it and what? Receive it. Say it with me. Believe it and what? So why, why is it guaranteed? I'll tell you why it's guaranteed. Because your auntie didn't promise it to you. Your daddy didn't promise it to you. Come on, your boyfriend didn't promise it to you. We're talking about the one that created the heavens and earth, that he's the one that can't lie, and he's the one that's promising you a full inheritance. So you better start studying the Bible to find out what's in the book and what's yours. Look at this. For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of their sins they had committed under their first covenant. So he's saying, this is, what, this is what he's saying. For me to be one with you, I had to take care of the debt of the first covenant, but I covered it. So now we can start a new covenant. But you know what's so great about the new covenant? This new covenant is not ratified through obedience. It's ratified by faith. This is what we're saying. The first covenant, if you obeyed God, you were blessed. If you disobeyed God, you were cursed. Now, in the new covenant, God doesn't say you disobey me and you're going to experience a wonderful life. This is what he's saying. This is what he's saying. You don't qualify for eternal life. You don't qualify for healing. You don't call, qualify for, come on, you don't qualify for freedom because you're perfect. You qualify because Jesus qualifies. What he's saying is, now salvation is a gift. Come on. Salvation, freedom is a gift. Healing is a gift. My blessings are a gift. And you receive it not because you're good enough. You receive it because Jesus is representing you. Someone say, Jesus represents me. You know what's so great? When you show up to court one day in heaven, you know who's going to be there with you? Jesus. He's representing you. He's going to say, Satan might be there, 
he might, you know. Yeah, but you know, they did this, they did this. He said, that's all covered by my blood. I died for their present sins. I died for their past sins. I died for their future sins. And understand, what's on your record is not your record, not your credit. What's on your record, if you're a covenant believer, his record is now your record. Now, come on, you got to understand, when Jesus forgives you, he gives you his righteousness. That's so powerful. Um, ran out of time. That was a good intro. <laughs> but I needed to lay that down a little bit so you can understand, but... Okay, Sunday. Sunday. I'm t- you got to know... I'm telling you, you got to know the covenant because if you don't understand the agreement you have with God, this is what's going to happen. You're going to perish because you don't understand. This is what it means. is that if you don't know what's yours, you start doubting when you should have faith. So we, we need to understand forgiveness is yours. The covenant was established not because of you, it was established by him. And the great thing about this new agreement with God, he represents the front part that he initiates the covenant with you in the agreement, but he also initiates the guarantee. The guarantee used to be you. The guarantee now is Jesus that you qualify. There's a big difference when you're standing before God and your faith is in you. If your faith is in you, you're never going to make it. Your faith must be in Jesus Christ. He's the one that forgave you. He's the one that died for your sins. He's the one, come on, that's giving you eternal life. All of it is a gift that you can receive tonight. Who receives a gift? Not perfect people. People that realize I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I hope you got this tonight just a little bit. What is the covenant? God wants to share his life with you. His full life with you. What does God want to be? Your best friend. The scripture that says, I don't call you slaves, I call you friend. This song we used to sing is, I'm a friend of God. And that's a covenant word because when God is enter, break, uh, establishing a covenant with you, it's a friendship. And his friendship is so cool because his friendship is not like people. They're so conditional. They love you when you're doing good. They walk out on you when you're doing bad. But this is what I've learned about Jesus. When you're doing bad and you're brokenhearted and you're struggling, that's when he's closest to you. He wants to show you how much he loves you. Anybody could say they love you when you got money in the bank. Right? Anybody could say they love you when you're succeeding, but can they say they love you when you're hurting and you're broken and you're sick and you're lonely and you're damaged? Well, Jesus is close to the brokenhearted. He loves you so much. So tonight, what I want to do is give an opportunity for every single person here to begin a walk with Jesus. Now, Jesus does not want to be close to you. He wants to be in you. And that's why once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you could say something like this, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. What he's saying is it doesn't matter. See, some of you guys are freaked out about demons that you should be actually rebuking. Because greater is he that is in you. Pastor, can you come pray over my house? I got demons. I go, why don't you cast them out? You got the same Jesus I do. Just tell them to leave. Leave. In Jesus' name. So tonight, we're believing that some of you guys are going to get set free from demons. That means there's some demons that have been tormenting you. There's been thoughts. There's been overwhelming And when you're being tormented by demons, uh, most of the time you know. Like this is more than just my thoughts. I feel like this is overpowering. It's overwhelming. But tonight, Jesus is saying, I can set you free. Jesus doesn't want to just forgive you. He wants to cleanse you of everything you've ever done and erase it off your record. Now, people won't let you get away with things and they'll never forget what you've done. But when God forgives you, he totally erases it. And either you're going to stand before God with a completely clear book record or you're going to stand before God guilty with all of your sins. And the only reason is you never place your faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that cleanses you of all your sins. It's time to enter in to a relationship with the Lord, a friendship with God. I, I'll tell you this, I've been living for God for a long time and I'm not going backwards. I love God. 
There's, there's, no, there's no one and there's no temptation that will take me away from God because I, I'm telling you, I love God. Now, you might not be there yet, but you could grow. And you, but to understand, it's not that you loved him, he loves you, but, but your love can grow. And that you love God more than you love whatever temptation is coming your way. I'm not saying I don't get tempted, but I love Jesus more, more than the temptation that comes my way. And I've grown into that. I've grown into that. But God's got, he, he got me there. So now, tonight if you're saying, Pastor, I want to be forgiven for real. I want to be cleansed of all my sins. And I want to enter in a covenant with God. And when you enter in a covenant with God, this is all we're saying. Everything that's his, now is yours. Of course, he's the richest in the whole universe. He owns everything. He goes, I want a relationship with you. I love you. I see your broken heart. I want to heal you. I see the abuse you've gone through. The destructive cycles. I want to set you free. I want to make you new. Today's your, today's your day. The Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be what? Saved. Okay. So I'm going to count to three. If you say, Pastor, that's me. I want you to think about this. Pastor, I'm not sure I'm in covenant with God or I have a relationship with God, but I want to today. You're one yes away from your whole life being transformed, from your destiny being changed. I, I remember when Lisa, my wife, she came into a little Bible study that we had in Rialto. My mom was doing a Bible study. It was at some, some person's house that we didn't even know. And they asked my mom to do a Bible study. My mom invited me on a Saturday night to this Bible study. Of course, I'm going to say yes to mama. But while she was saying yes, I was saying yes to mama, her friend was invited to a Bible study, and she said yes to her friend. And the opportunity came, and Lisa, Lisa has never met her parents. She was adopted when she was a little baby. We've never been able to contact her, not, um, her biological parents. Um, her mother and, and ended up being a severe alcoholic. When I met um, um, uh, Lisa, her mom was, it was really a wino. It was, I never seen her not just totally drunk. I never seen her not totally drunk. She, from the morning, six o'clock in the morning, she'd be drunk, talking to herself. That's what, who she, all her brothers died before I met her of cirrhosis of the liver. Every one of them died of alcoholism. Um, Lisa, as a young lady, really didn't feel loved. She, she would say, I feel like I'm nothing. I feel like, like I'm a leaf in the wind or a piece of trash in the wind. But then she came to that Bible study and Jesus said, I love you, baby. I know you feel rejected. And I feel like no one loves you. And I might feel like everybody's walked out on you, but I'm here. And he began to knock on her heart. He said, Lisa, will you let me in? I'll forgive you. You're so valuable to me. And if you open your heart, I'll, enter, I'll, I'll have a relationship with you. And I promise you, I'll never leave you. She gave her life to Jesus that, that day. Her life has never changed. She didn't know she was going to marry into ministry. She was just saying yes to Jesus. And she's not turned back. Today's your day. I'm going to count to three. If you say, Pastor, that's me. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want to enter in a covenant relationship with God. And don't be ashamed. This is your moment. Jesus already paid the price for this relationship with you. All God wants to do is be your friend. Are you willing to give up your whole life as he's given his life to you? And if you're willing to give up your whole life, you could have a brand new life today. Let it all go. Let it all go. Whatever you bring in and you feel like, oh, I don't know if I can let this go. Anything that you're holding on and you're not willing to let go is actually that thing that's destroying your life. Let it go. I can't do it. You can't do it, but God can do it. You can do all things through Christ. I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure I'm right with God, but I want to make I'm right with God. I want forgiveness for my sins. I want to enter in a covenant relationship with Jesus. No one's going to get to heaven by accident. It's a choice you make. Today's your moment. If you're ashamed of Jesus here, you'll be ashamed of Jesus. Come on. If you confess God, Jesus before men, Jesus will confess you before his Father. If you deny him before men, Jesus will deny you before the Father. This is your moment. Don't deny him. He's not going to your heart. So if you feel it well, then I'll be like, ah, oh, I really need to make a change today. Today's your day, and you'll never regret giving your life to Jesus. When I say three, raise your hands. You want to give your life to Jesus. One, I want to I enter in a covenant with Jesus. Two, and when I say three, quickly raise your hands. All this building. Three, raise your hands. All this building. I see the hand. Thank you, baby. Thank you, guys. Love that. Love that, guys. 
Over there, over there, over there. Proud of you, proud of you, proud of you. Come on. This is your brand new start. You come the way you are. I see the hand over there. You come the way you are. I want those that raise their hands. Can you do me one more favor? Just stand up. Everybody, let's all stand up. But those that raise their hands especially, stand up right now. And I want you to make, this is what I want you to do. I want you to come up here real quick. I just want to pray with you. If, if you if, I just want to, just come on, I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray with you. And this is a sign of you walking away from your old life and following Jesus Christ. Come on. If you're giving your life to Jesus, come forward real quick. Come forward real quick. Let's give them a hand as they're coming forward. Come on, this is a night. If you feel, another thing. If you feel you've been demonized, like there's something in your mind, you feel demonized. There's something like messing with you. I want you to come forward. We're going to help you get set free today. Jesus is going to come in and kick out every tormenting spirit, every addictive spirit in your life. If you're addicted, come forward. Come on. You don't need to leave with those chains. You can be set free. Come on, give up your life and get a new life. Love you. I Take some real man to serve God. Love you. Love you, Mama. God bless you. Love you. All right. All right. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is surrender your life. I love what this song said. I surrender. You don't have to twist Jesus' arm to forgive you. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. As a matter of fact, there's no one that loves you more than Jesus does, more than God does. That's it. No one's loved you so much that they died for you, shed blood for you, and suffered for you. Just to have a relationship with you. He knew the only way to forgive your sins, the sins had to be paid for. And he loves you. So when we talk about covenant, I want you to understand you're entering a relationship with God where God is saying, I want to share my whole life with you. Will you share your whole life with me? That's the deal. Now, once you make a decision to follow Jesus and share your whole life with him, your life will never be the same again. Now, this is what happens. Tonight, Jesus is going to forgive you and he'll cleanse you and set you free. You're going to receive forgiveness you're not going to beat yourself up anymore. And then you're going to start following Jesus. Someone say, follow Jesus. Now, if you're, follow, if you're, if you're following Jesus, you're going to follow him. Um, I would say this, come to church every chance you get. You used to go to the clubs every chance you got. You used to do whatever you wanted every chance you got. Come to God. Just come to church. Learn. Grow. So I'm not going to teach you. This is just an intro. I'm going to get deeper into it. This covenant relationship you have with God so you can understand your relationship with God and what's available to you. There's so many promises that God has for you because he loves you. And now that you've given your life to Jesus, you qualify for every single one of them. Someone say, I qualify. Get ready. Stop thinking other people are more, like, more lucky than you. Understand, it's not about luck. It's about relationship. And if you're in a relationship with God, you're in the best place you've ever been, Okay. I'm going to pray for the biggest miracle of all, that God's Spirit invades your life and you become a new person. I'm going to pray that today you receive the gift of eternal life. Jesus is knocking on your heart's door. You're going to let him in and he's going to fill you with his Spirit. Someone say, fill me with your Spirit. You're going to be totally forgiven. Receive it today, okay? Pray with me. Repeat after me. Say, repeat after me, everybody here. You do your part. God will do his. Say, Jesus. I thank you for not giving up on me, for wanting a relationship with me so bad that you suffered and died and rose from the dead to give me a new life. No one has ever loved me that much. I open my heart, Lord, and I ask you, Jesus, come in, fill me with your spirit. I want to be one with you. Set me free from all addiction, destructive mindsets. Heal my past. Make me new. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I'm done doing life my way. I receive your whole life. 
and I give you my whole life. From this day forward, I'm saved. I'm born again. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Fill me now with power. I resist every devil, every tormented spirit, depression. I renounce you now and I command you addiction. Leave my life. Leave my body. Generational curses. I command you now. Leave my life. Leave my mind. Leave my family. Today, I'm free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. You, we pray. I want to pray with you right now. We want to make sure that we get your information. There is a I Got Saved. That's your next step. We got classes. Um, actually, we got classes. Um, this next Tuesday, Holy Word. So I want to make sure everybody signs up. You need prayer. Stay right here. We want to pray with you. We're believing right now that God's doing miracles. You'll never be the same again. But if you need prayer, stay right here. God bless you guys. Um, also, don't forget about prison ministry. They have 20, 200 Bibles. Let's get rid of all of them. You need prayer, just stay right here. We'd love to pray with you.